Hello, this is Dr. Dennis Bielfeldt of the Christ School of Theology. We're talking about Duns Scotus, who died in 1308. And we're talking about his arguments for the existence of God. Uh, basically, his non-modal argument for the first efficient cause goes like this. Some being X is produced. Okay. Therefore, X is produced by some other being Y. Well, that makes sense. Now, either Y is unproduced. It is an unproduced first producer. Or it is a posterior producer. But a series of produced producers cannot proceed interminably. Therefore, the series stops at an unproduced producer, a first efficient cause that produces independently. Think of the argument from uh, emotion, right, from Aquinas. It seems very similar. Aquinas uh, says that an infinite series of movers is not possible, that in order for there to be movement, there must be a first mover. So the big question in this argument is, can a series of produced producers proceed interminably? A series of produced producers, can it uh, proceed interminably? Uh, so, okay, so we have this, x, something produces that, something produces that. Can this keep on going forever uh, to the left? Hmm? Now, um, this certainly does seem to be possible if we're talking about an accidental series, which is a kind of in theory series, a series in the order of becoming, right? The question is, does this hold, can you keep going backwards? if you're dealing with an essentially ordered series. Does this apply as well to an essentially ordered series? In an essentially ordered series, as I talked about, the cause can be of a different nature and order, but that is not so with an accidentally ordered series. SCOTUS offers several arguments trying to show that an essentially ordered series must terminate in a first efficient cause. Now, he argues, if there were an infinite series of essentially ordered causes, the totality of things affected would depend on some prior cause. But nothing can be an essentially ordered cause of itself. And if this prior cause were part of the totality of things affected, it would be part of the essentially ordered cause of itself. Therefore, even if there were an infinite series of essentially ordered causes, the totality of things affected would be affected by a cause outside the totality. So the way I like to think about this is not with that line going left and right, but I like to think about it as this way. Well, here's the world, it's produced. There must be some reason, cause, why this world was produced, but there would have to be some reason, cause, why this reason, cause, produced the world, and it's precisely this series that cannot head off towards infinity. Why? Because if there's no ground down here, there would be nothing subsequent. How could something that itself, uh, well, how could it be that this could just keep going forever? Because if it were to keep going forever, then the bare fact of it keeping going forever would be a thing to be explained, right? This is very closely tied into what we call now the principle of sufficient reason. So 
he needs to get to a first efficient cause prior to this totality. Being possessed of efficient causal power does not necessarily imply imperfection. It is possible that something possesses efficient causal power without imperfection. However, if nothing possesses efficient causal power without dependence on something else, then nothing has efficient causal power without imperfection. But it is possible that some nature possesses independent efficient causal power. A nature that possesses independent efficient causal power is absolutely first. Therefore, it is possible that there be an absolutely first efficient causal power. So what he's trying to argue here is that it is possible that there is a first thing here uh, in the there is possible that there is a first thing here uh, in this series of efficient ordered causes. Uh, so I'm going to take a break right now. This is Dr. Dennis Bilfeld of the uh, Institute of Lutheran Theology, and we'll be right back with you. Thank you.